drummers, I think, is very straightforward. He's not like other instrument, not like other instrument, pianist or violinist or cellist, you know. Drum is boom, straight away. So I think everyone can be a percussionist. Yes, everyone, because it's everywhere. Rhythm is everywhere. We have a heartbeat, we have a tone, you know, intonation, you know, and then the movement, that's rhythm also. percussion my company actually want to push it to another limit is me myself and my group of uh, uh, we say core team members we want to make this into a very Malaysian base so it's not very very Sinua very Chinese no because we brought up we have Malay culture other culture Indian Bangla okay Aborigine so I think it's something that we have to embrace, embrace the culture that, you know, really like support us to become a group from Malaysia. People ask me, where do you get your, you know, who inspired you or books, magazine? I said, usually a uh, lifestyle. I like to see, watch people and listen to people, what they say. And uh, I go back home and think, and uh, because I have a fashion background, that's why that when I do a photo shoot, I direct. Uh, not necessary that I had to pick a beautiful clothes, but definitely model, yes. But sometimes, mostly I make them ugly, you know. Picture, they have uh, uh, maybe 60% uh, ugly thing. They are something beautiful thing, maybe beautiful color, uh, beautiful clothes or a beautiful model, you know, or beautiful pose. So I inject fashion to it, so it become not so ugly. My mom spent her entire youth in uh, Burma. So she has brought a lot of Burmese uh, recipes you know so and she has passed that on down to Mita so you will find that a lot of Malaysians have got a lot of different ethnic uh, backgrounds and influences in their being you know coming to Malaysia is about uh, experiencing people yeah uh, for example uh, we are a Gujarati home and uh, we are vegetarians right and then my sons are not vegetarians and uh, uh, but a lot of the food that we make in, in our home, while a lot of it is Gujarati, a lot of it is actually Malaysian food. It's a very interesting job for me. Different pieces, you have different way of doing it. Uh, it's not like a mass production. Every day you are facing the same things. Every day you walk in, you start the machine, you do the same thing. But for restoration work, different pieces from different country, they have different way of doing it. So you is a to me it's a challenge. I like I like the challenge. <laughs> I'm trying my best to keep the piece in original. Not to uh, uh, if can get the same type of wood in Malaysia, we, we will try the best to put back and we try to get the same uh, carving or anything missing to put back the furniture in the original stage. All of us, you know, we were professional women, eight of us, and women were calling us, complaining to us, crying. Um, and so that was when we really, that it was just coming to match all the messages over radio, television, in the mosques, and, you know, complaints from all kinds of women, friends, and acquaintances about all the problems they have with the religious department, with the Sharia courts, that we really decided that, look, you know, I think we need to go back to the Qur'an and look at the Qur'an and study the Qur'an and to see whether the Qur'an actually justifies um, discrimination against women. So there was a lot of interest and growing interest and growing concern. You know, of course there were women's groups um, that were opposed to the work that we do. Muslim women were, who were opposed to the work that we do because they felt that Islam has no role to play um, in public life. Religion is private. But how can religion be private when religion is a source of law in your country? How can you say it's a private matter? 
when I'm young, really young, like probably about six or seven years old, I follow my grandmothers a lot. And uh, from uh, that old times, uh, they are wearing the kebaya. Kebaya is a Malaysia traditional wear. The design is there, but um, the motif, the embroidery, the colors, she created herself. It inspired me a lot. After, I mean, it's not a big fight, but some uh, what they call arguments with my dad. He said, okay, fine, if you want to go into an art scene, but it's no fashion. It had to be graphic or interior design. It's more like stable. <laughs> then I said, okay, it's fine, at least I can go into the art school. So I went for the first semester, because first semester is a basic, everyone learns the same thing. But the second semester, you have to be more focused. So I changed to fashion design, fashion design and textile without telling them. But the result of the, our project have to send back for the parents to sign. So anyway, I told them that I've changed the subject to fashion design and my dad said, okay, since you are keen what you want to be, then you go ahead and there's no regret.